in this example, uh, we're asked to solve a system of equations. All right, now this is a quadratic and linear system. Uh, so the best way I find it to solve it is using elimination. All right, elimination is when you add or subtract the two equations to eliminate a variable. All right, so taking a look at this, um, my first step, I usually rewrite the equation and I line up my like terms a little bit better. So like on this bottom equation, that negative 2x, I'm going to put it very firmly underneath the minus 4x. All right, now the next step, we need to subtract the two equations. So depending on your teacher, some people do as I do, and we just take this bottom set and we flip all the signs. So my po or positive y turned negative, my negative 2 turned positive, my positive 3 turned negative. That way when you add down, uh, you're not really as concerned about the signs. Um, other people put a minus and some parentheses and you have to like bounce around. I find if you don't do the sign changing here, y'all kids tend to forget that, uh, <laughs> that you're subtracting. Uh, so here we go. So y minus y is zero. Uh, x squared minus nothing is x squared. Negative 4x plus 2x is negative 2x, and 3 minus 3 is 0. Alright, um, now the next step here is to factor the problem. Now, if there were three terms, if there was a c term here that wasn't 0, I would double bubble factor this. Now, because I don't have that c term, I'm just going to factor out the greatest common factor here, which is x. If I want to check myself so I don't wreck myself, I could redistribute that, right? So x times x is x squared, and x times negative 2 is negative 2x. All right, the next step, you use your zero product property. So you take this stuff that is multiplied together, and you set it equal to zero. So here I'm going to say x equals zero, and here I'm going to say x minus 2 equals zero. And you just solve these little mini equations. All right. Now remember, we're looking for points of intersection, right? We're looking for where the line and the parabola cross each other. So finding the x value, that's just half the work because you need a y value to complete your ordered pairs. So in order to find the y value, what you need to do is go back to your original equations. Okay. I could choose to plug into the quadratic or I could choose to plug into the linear. Now, well, linear is less work, right? <laughs> it's only two terms instead of three. So I'm going to plug into the linear equation every single time. But understand it works for the quadratic also. It's just I'm very lazy as a human being. And so if I could keep things as easy as possible, I do. So I'm going to take these x values and I'm plugging them in where the y value, or sorry, where the x value is in the linear formula. All right, so here you see it down here, and then I'm going to do it again with the 2. Again, that comes from the linear equation. And then we solve these many equations also. So negative 2 times 0 is 0. Add 3 to that, and you get 3. Here, negative 2 times 2 is 4, uh, negative 4, sorry. And you add 3 to that, and you get negative 1. So my two solutions here are 0, 3, and here, 2, negative 1. All right, uh, in the post-production of this video, I will go in and, uh, well, not in the video, but into the Jamboard, and I will write out the procedure on that first one, just so you have all the steps to write down, if you're one of those procedure people. Okay. Sometimes having the words written down makes it really easy for you to understand what's happening with all these math steps. Because these are long problems and they do require a lot of steps. Alright, so on this middle one I am starting to line up my like terms. Alright, now the next thing that I need to do, now that my terms are lined up, I'm going to flip my signs, right? So down here I have a positive y, it turns negative. I have a positive x, it turns negative, 
and a positive 1 that turns negative. So when I add down, uh, y plus negative y is 0, x squared plus nothing is x squared, and 3x minus x is 2x, and 2 minus 1 is 1. All right, so then our next step is to go ahead and factor. So I'm going to go ahead and do double bubble factoring. Uh, so I set up my two sets of parentheses. So to get an x squared, I'm going to do an x times x. All right, uh, my fall down sign is a plus, so I'm just going to put a plus. Now my choice sign, to get a positive 1, I need to have either a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. They have to match. So since I already had a plus, I'm going to put a second plus there to match it. So I ask myself what multiplies to make 1, that adds to make 2, and that is 1 and 1. Now notice these sets of parentheses say the exact same thing. So when I go to do my mini equations with the zero product property, I really only have to make the one mini equation. Otherwise, I'm doing the same thing twice, and it's really not necessary. So then our last step, we found our x. So to find my y value, I take it back to my linear equation. I could do the quadratic. It's just I'm lazy. All right. And so where the x is in that linear equation, I put a negative 1. And so negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So my final answer for this problem is negative 1, 0. All right, so then we just have 1 to go. These, this set of problems is really lengthy, y'all. <laughs> um, on your test, I think this is probably the hardest question, to be honest with you. Uh, historically, in the past, when you guys had this question on another test, it was the most missed question. So make sure that you're really studying it and understanding it. All right, so we lined up our variables. Now I'm going to flip my signs. So this positive y turns negative, positive x turns negative, and positive 13 turns negative. And now we add down. So y minus y is 0. x squared plus nothing is x squared. Negative 3x and negative x makes for negative 4x. And 1 minus 13 is negative 12. All right, so then we're going to double bubble factor. So I set up two sets of parentheses. So to get x squared, I'm going to put x and x. My fall down sign is a minus. And to get a negative 12, my parentheses have to have opposite signs. So I already have a negative. So I'm going to go ahead and put a positive. So then I have to ask myself what multiplies to make 12 that adds to make 4. Uh, that's going to be 6 and 2. Remember, 6 is the bigger number, so it has to go with your fall down sign. Next up, we make our mini equations using the zero product property. So I say x minus 6 equals 0 and x plus 2 equals 0. And I solve those mini equations by adding or subtracting. All right, so then our last step, right, we have our x's, so now we need our y's. So we're going to go back to that linear equation. And where the x is, I plug in these numbers. So I'm going to have y equals 6 plus 13, and y equals negative 2 plus 13. So here I get a 19 for y, and here I get an 11. So my final answers, my final ordered pairs, are going to be 6, 19, and negative 2, 11.